What's the crack, lads? It's a big one. It's here. Best pint of Guinness in London. One of the hardest videos to film, considering the pubs were miles away from each other, but we got it done and it's here. And lads, you better believe this video wasn't cheap to film and that's where Surfshark come in. A massive thank you to Surfshark for sponsoring this video. What the fuck is Surfshark, you ask? Surfshark is a VPN, meaning a virtual private network. Surfshark is an app or web extension that lets you place your phone or your laptop anywhere in the world. So all your private information, your passwords, your search history, Yes, you, you dirty dog. It's all kept private. But even better than that, you can watch movies, TV shows, live sporting events that you couldn't usually watch when you're in Ireland. With Surfshark, you can place yourself in the UK and watch Match of the Die on a baby Shay player, innit? That is match of the day, isn't it? Or is that the Sunday game? All you have to do is download Surfshark, change your location, and done. And they have a massive monster mojo mega sale on at the minute. Use the code Guinness, get 83% off, plus three months for free. Mad bastards. The link is in the description. Make sure you check out Surfshark, lads. This video wouldn't have happened without their support. So thank you, Surfshark. And lads, sit back, relax, and enjoy the best pints that London has to offer. Right lads, we finally made it to London, the home of Trafalgar Square, the Tower Bridge, Buckingham Palace, but we don't give a shit about any of that. We saw all the, the fucking boozers. Best point again is in central London. Let's see what it has to offer, let's go. Okay, pub one, central London. Uh, I think, the geography's not great, Mayfair, I think it said in the map. The Guinea Grill. Hopefully a good pint of guinea in here, what? Pub one, London, uh, expectations? No idea. Let's go in, have a gander. Slancha to London, lads. First thing I noticed, and I think someone actually said it about this place, the Guinea Grill, it's one of the only places in London, or the UK, at that, that you get an all star glass. I'm absolutely chuffed with that. All star glass came in, said, I'm here thinking, you know, big smoke, London, no one's going to know me, expected. Walk in. Hey, how's it going? Oh, I do this thing called the Guinness Girl. Oshin, I presume the guy who runs the place, comes up behind me. How are you, Dara? Do you want a pint, Slancha? Fucking hell, what a start, lads. Um, yeah, so shout out Oshin, legend. But on the other hand, <clears throat> you having a good look, Oshin? How are you, Dara? <laughs> How are you? I'm doing well. Is it up to scratch? That's the most important thing. Well, it's in an old style glass. Yeah, we prefer the old style glass. You I must do. be one of the only. I think the other ones look like the World Cup and. They're shy. Yeah. Well, it looks great. like the World Cup. That's a good one. <laughs> but um, is is there? A, do you have to pay? Do you pay for these? I can't comment on can't where comment. they come from. No but problem. I can guarantee that if you Back come in, in you'll get job. one. Yeah. Um, perfect. And yeah. yeah, how long have you had the place? I'm here six years. Six yeah, years. But, but obviously it's one of the oldest pubs in London. Okay. Been a pub here since 1423. Well. The guy, guy who had it before me was here for 26 years, Carl Smith. Mm -hmm. It's always had good Guinness, but I think we've improved it slightly. It's good? I'm glad to hear. It's good if gear. you say it's good, then I'll, I'll have to agree with you. Hang on. All right. Good, good to man. see you, Dar. Sound Lingering in the back. Man, get in. <laughs> what a start. What a welcome. I'm getting cocky now. I need to be brought back down to earth. Also, I can't just be giving it an unbelievable score just because Oshin's an absolute gent and I got a great welcome. Ego, check yourself lad, check yourself. It's good though, it's good gear. Mm. 
it is I've noticed and I, I'd say it'll be like this in all the pubs because I think it's the general UK thing definitely colder it's, it's definitely colder than the average pint you know, I do like a cold some people say when you make it too cold it obviously uh, diminishes the taste which is fair enough it's not like disgustingly cold but it is it's colder than a normal pint passing the stick test again can't, aka Mrs. Giri behind the camera now stopping her now the London takeover has begun a good point I'm just absolutely blown, blown away blown away I'm just delighted with the all side glass and as he said he couldn't, couldn't comment but I know in Ireland they have to pay they get the new side glasses for free they have to pay for the all side glasses God knows what the situation is over here. You probably pff, brought them over in a box or something, but good stuff. So now I have to think, if I got that in a pub in Dublin, what score would I give it? Mm. <clears throat> I'm, I can't quite give it the 8, 7.9, I'm, I'm honestly expecting kind of 6s and 7s all throughout this London trip, so, uh, no, you're supposed to take the first score, I'm giving it the 8, heads melted, I ha I'm giving it the 8, good strong creamy finish, 8 out of 10, shtick, serious. <clears throat> Again, it's weird. It is. It is from Dublin, but it's very, very slightly different to what to what you get. And there is some residual. Um, there is some residual uh, yeast left in the barrel. Right. And if you if you leave the um, if you if you shake the barrel or, or serve it straight after it's been delivered, then that yeast is going to be in the beer, and that affects the flavour. So what you need to do is make sure that the Guinness itself is left settled for at least 12 hours, so that yeast can all percolate to the bottom. So the barrel doesn't move for 12 hours. Once, once the barrel gets delivered here, it doesn't move until it's empty. That's okay. very 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 important. So what you're waiting for there is, you know, you got the four million bubbles happening there, and the and the, and the lovely black Guinness is happening at the bottom and you get this lovely creamy that's building up here. So what we're waiting for when we're letting it settle is for the head to form like a spongy, creamy um, entity that you can float right to the top. And it's I'm sure you don't work for Guinness, Oshin. I might as well. Jesus Christ, spongy. I've never heard any of these words. It's very important Sorry. because if you if you fill that in one go, yeah. it can sit the wrong way around. It's yeah, so right yeah. So what we're waiting for is for, for it to, to really, really sort of yeah. crystallise like that, and then we'll, we'll float it up to the top. Back. And the other thing, obviously, you know from your photography that if you look across the head, the head should be higher than the rim of the glass. Yeah. Do you know what I call that? Go on. Domage. Domage. Okay. <laughs> you do an awful, you do an awful lot of damage around the internet, right here. <laughs> here. So what, what, what we're looking for? We wait for it to go completely dark. Wait for. It. I, yeah. actually, I actually topped that up slightly too early. Man, the people this far. Give them that point because I'm not having another. And I'm, that's not an insult so to what, you. What you need to look at? Can you see? Look at if you look out towards the window at the bottom. Yeah. Can you see like it's got a ruby clarity? Ruby red, yeah. Ruby red. It's like it's like looking at a ruby ring. Yeah. That you get that beautiful, clean, bright clarity. Yeah. If you haven't got that, yeah, the you point's no good. You can see it, yeah. Just like that, Oshin, Guinness legend, right, top man. Absolutely great to see it. Um, I haven't got a card. I'll just give you. I'll give you a number. <laughs> right, lads, pub two. We've trekked over to the other side of central London. Fuck knows, geography wise. Uh, Mac and Sons Guinness sign on the outside. Always a good sign. Let's have a look. Right, 
Right lads, voice over Dara here. I actually forgot to turn on the mic or something for this clip. I don't know why, don't know what happened, but anyway. Um, so as you can see, the glass was fucking fairly filthy. Let's be honest, let's call a spade a spade. Um, I think the reason why, because although... I did say I really like the look of this pub I and I wasn't sure and this kind of was was a theme in a lot of these pubs I wasn't sure if it was a British pub or an Irish pub or what it turned out to be an Irish pub um, but I, I didn't really think it looked like one but then I was thinking well what does look like an Irish pub anyway I'm rambling I think the reason for the dirty glass was because this pub um, you can't obviously smell it through the screen but the pub served uh, Thai food which did smell nice but to be honest with you, I, I don't mind a pub serving food, but like the smell was very much overpowering the whole pub. And like if you're sitting there drinking pints of Guinness, I don't really want to be smelling food that much, um, uh, especially quite quite strong food. But I presume that's why the glass was dirty. They must maybe wash the glasses with all the sort of plates and knives and forks and all from the food. And that we, we I say we all know, a lot of us know that leads to a lot of grease and stuff sticking to the, the Guinness glass. So I think that's the reason for the dirty glass. Um, then I went on to drink it, went on to score it. Uh, what did I say? I, it, it wasn't yeah it just wasn't a great point um it was absolutely freezing cold like a lot of the points on this trip and yeah i don't think there was much to write home about uh new style glass as well i think i gave it a 6.1 not the worst point i've ever had but obviously terrible presentation and i felt bad because the guy who served with me the guy who served it to me was an absolute gent but um look i can only i can only score and review the point that's given to me and look and at the end of the day, the glass was uh, dirty and the point wasn't great. So, what can you do? 6.1. Like, right, that's Pub 3, Gibneys. Uh, I'll be honest with you, I don't know where the fuck I am at this stage, somewhere in central London. Not much in the way of a sign, that's all I can really see. Um, beside a place called Daffodil Mulligans. Yeah, Gibneys, highly recommended. Hopefully, a creamer. Man yourself. Thanks a million. Looks good. <laughs> Fair fucks to you. <laughs> Loving it. All star glass. Doesn't feel as cold as the last two I got, which is a good thing. Last two have been absolutely freezing. Head looks perfect. Uh, barman said he just cleaned the lines, so I'm expecting big things. Not a single bubble to be seen in the head. Fucking looks decent. And he threw in an pack of hunky dories as well. And a cup oh, of tea. Hey, Barry's tea and all. Barry's tea, Jesus Christ. Thank Might as well be at home. Fair play, man. Slide you. Yeah, so the temperature of that <coughs> tastes a lot more like what you would get back home in Ireland. Those last two are very cold pints. Now, I probably like my pint. I probably don't mind a cold pint as much as the next man. Um, but they were very, very cold, especially the the bloody Mac and Sons. Yeah, God, what a shame that was. But anyway. Nearly seems like the glass is <coughs> too clean. The glass seems absolutely pristine, but it's as if it's too clean to get good shtick. But as as we have um, figured out in the past, good shtick does not mean a good point. You can get a glass that's absolutely filthy, and the shtick just fucking sticks down to the grease all down the side of it. So shtick, not exactly a sign of a great point. Um, but yeah, it's going to be very minimal on this. I think they do use a different technique generally in the in the UK to clean the glasses but I could be totally full of shit as well but um 
this place opposed to the last place, this sparkling clean glass, because this is just a, a little underground pub. They don't seem to sell food or anything, maybe they do, but I think that's why it's a clean glass. Also, I was not expecting it to look like this. I had to go in the entrance of the restaurant upstairs called Daffodil Mulligans. It looked really, really fancy. It said Michelin star on the outside. Walked in, it was like, oh, trying to get into the pub. And then they brought, bring you downstairs. And here you are, beautiful little sort of underground. It's like a, it's kind of like an underground raven here, but it's just like a normal pub as well. Big, massive uh, TV down the back. I know where I'd be coming to watch a match. And then actually, if you want to just pan around, it, we got the telly here. Ugh. Excuse me, a little telly in the in the booth. This is like a, a snug in itself, but there's two of them side by side. This, I've never really seen anything like this, so I'd definitely be chilling in here. This is the type of place if you want to get away from the world. You come down here, no windows, no nothing. You can fucking close that door behind you if you want. But anyway, back to the point. It's decent. Not gonna top. Um, the guinea grill, that was a very good point. Yeah, minimal enough shtick to be honest. But I have to say the glass was sparkling and clean, so I'd rather a clean glass and not much shtick than a dirty glass and loads of shtick. Wouldn't anyone? Right, let's give it a score. Yeah, it hasn't blown me away. Pretty good. Uh, very sound barman behind the bar. Again, the place only opened about 20 minutes ago, so maybe if I came here in two or three hours, there'd be a few more Guinness flow through the through the pipes, possibly. But again, who knows? I'll go 7.5 point three. Far above average. Not mind blowing. I'm not gonna get near the eights. Um, a good point, a good solid point. 7.3, give these. <laughs> right lads, pub four. Coaching horses. I, I remember going to one in Bristol, I thought that was a very, very funny name. Turns out there's about six of them around London. We're in the one in Covent Garden, uh, and by the looks of it from the outside, it's pretty packed inside, so it must be a good pint of cream. Coaching horses. Let's go. Well, that's coaching horses, Covent Garden, perfectly busy. But I always say I love when a pub is busy, but I have a little spot in the corner to film. Bit of background noise, bit of crack. Good solid bit of domage on that. New style glass, we'll forgive it. Feels very cold, just perfectly settled. Glass looks relatively clean, not perfect. Um, no bubbles in the head. But yeah, freezing cold. So late, late, coaching fucking horses. Love the name. There's about 40 of them in London. That's good juice. That's good juice, as the fella says. Yeah, I'm buzzed and revitalized. Given these really nice underground spot, but just unfortunately no one really there when I was there. Then you come here and there's just people around and it just gives you life. So again, like I said, coaching horses, you kind of get, you get the recommendations. You get the recommendations, coaching horses, and then it's only when you arrive to London and you Google it, and you see there's about eight of them around the place. You don't know where to be going. Um, but yeah, again, shout out Ian from Shitland the Guinness told me coaching horses, Covent Garden is the best one. And he actually said, I'll, I'll show it, I think I got a bit of footage of it. He said uh, proper old, old style carpet on the floor. So yeah, even though the carpet is spick and span, but it looks like it's from like the eighties. But yeah, very fucking cozy, perfect little kind of square kind of pub. Good spot. Gouchy doses. Also, Kat, if you want to pan to the wall, little, what is it, coaching horses, it's stout, stout of this world. Oh, very good. That's like those, um, so before, uh, all the Gen Zers watching this definitely won't know about this crack. Before there was any sort of, I think Guinness Advisor was the first one to do 
Guinness rating and then I came along soon after you had points of playing obviously shit London and Guinness all things Guinness all the big dogs um, but before that back in like the 2000s they used to have a thing called was it Pub Spy and it was like news of the world or some newspaper and it was literally the exact same thing it just wasn't on social media and they used to go around and like that it was totally anonymous and it would just be like uh, score out of 10 they talk about the pub so yeah there you go I think it was called Pub Spy it went for years anyway on to the point very cold but very good it's very drinkable I don't know am I going to beat the guinea grill but it's not going to be far off good good point it is funny how the one in the in Gibney's was, was far warmer and I'm not saying too warm but the other three of them so cold that's always what you expect in the UK um, yeah beautiful little pub in here what a time to be alive oh yeah I'm nailing through this point pretty solid stick top inch didn't really come in oh yeah decent decent gear decent gear and again I'm forgiven the new style glass that's kind of you just get over that when you go to the UK score hmm not far off the guinea grill at all at all decent point I'm gonna go 7-9 <clears throat> pretty much on par with the guinea grill point one we'll say point one less so the guinea grill is ahead at the minute but yeah very solid point coach and horse must get the price um, yeah I don't think I think I've been I don't think I've been saying the price in this video but I, I do know the prices and I'm gonna put it on the screen for I should have put it on the screen so I don't even need to say this now but yeah I'll get the price as well on this um, it was a small glass of Pinot Grigio and a pint for 12 pounds so maybe 5.50 I don't know we'll see so right Cauchinosis probably fucking god in 7.9 very good very respectable score okay lads the most requested by far the most requested pub in london the toucan uh carlisle street i don't know where i am at this stage somewhere near soho i think on a rainy night in soho the toucan for anyone who doesn't know is actually the bird i presume that's why the pub is called the toucan it's the bird that was used in all the guinness campaigns for decades and still being used to this day the bird with the big orangey and yellow and red beak um, so yeah save the best hopefully the best to last the toucan let's have it what the hell? Is that? It's just, it's just a light. Yeah, um, it's the timer. It's like when the, the, the light goes off. Yeah. It means the pint is ready. But it doesn't actually like do anything. It's just, no, yeah. nothing. No, it's that's the light. That's cool. Yeah. Never seen that before. Yeah. <laughs> No. Something's going on in the phone. A bit of artwork, I presume a token, but I don't want to speak too soon. Ah, the Guinness harp. I have never seen that before. I could do anything. <laughs> From yeah. peace. Yeah. Um, peace to don't imagine that, lad. Right. Right, lads, that's been a mad couple of minutes. Uh, first of all, I've never seen. You, you saw the. He, when he poured the gin, he poured the pint up to here. When he was letting it settle, put it on some yolk where these lights come up, and then it's like once the lights come off, you know, it's settled. It's probably like something to do with that whole 119.5 seconds and then 
he goes and puts a harp in the foam. What uh, always reminds me of Peep Show when, if you know, you know, when Super Hands goes no logo in the foam. But usually that's the shamrock. But I've never seen a harp put in the foam. I've actually, to be honest with you, I've never been in a pub where they put anything, any sort of design in the foam. So this is a first. Um, little bit of spillage going on. Glass, all star or new star glass. Relatively clean, but not perfect. But yeah, most of it's again, it's absolutely freezing. I, like, I'm surprised it's not getting as extra cold. It's absolutely freezing. Four out of the five pubs in London have been Baltic, and then Gibney's was like totally the other side. So, it's launch lads, most requested pub in London. <clears throat> Again, it seems like the type of place. It's it's definitely the most famous pub in London for Guinness. What is it? The best actual pint? You yeah, kind of this happens a lot when I go to places and like a, a random example coming into my mind. I went to Waterford and a place called Jeff's got recommended the most, but the Guinness was very average but it's just the most famous place in Waterford. And I feel like that could be the case here. Like, this is a really, really cool pub. Barman was only telling us, Jimi Hendrix played in the corner in the 60s. And I used to be surprised if you fit more than 20 people in here. So I really don't know how the fuck that would be possible. But uh, that was the 60s. And I'm not saying there's anything wrong with the point. All I'm just kind of prefacing it with that. I was also told the Toucan, Jason Momoa's favourite pub, Jason Momoa being the guy who played Aquaman, Cal Drogo in Game of Thrones. Let's just be honest, a very sexy man. Loves his Guinness. Uh, apparently this is his favourite pub. Good man, J.O. Um, but yeah, look, I can see why you would fall in love with this pub. I can see why if you came to London every time you would come to the Toucan. But I'm not about the... the I'm not about the cool stuff on the wall. I'm not really about this, that and the other. I'm about how good is the pint. Pint is good, don't get me wrong. But a lot of people did suggest in the messages that they were saying the Toucan is going to get the most recommendations, but it's a bit of a sort of a gimmicky pub. But you could say that about anywhere, lads. It's a very, very cool pub. Um, I thought it was only upstairs. That's all it was. They have a little spot downstairs as well. Like if this place was packed busy, you'd struggle to get over 100 people in it. It's just one of those pubs. Um, yeah, beautiful little tiny cozy pub. Um, but is the name bigger than the actual goodness of the Guinness? Could be. Now don't get me wrong, nothing wrong with that point. That is a good point. But yeah, not really far off the, the coach and horses point that I just had. Um, but I was kind of, yeah, I was kind of expecting to come and get like a sort of a mid eights point. But at the end of the day, like even to get an eight in London is, is really, really good. So yeah, hmm, don't want to give it away just yet what I'm actually going to give it. Interesting, interesting, interesting. Yeah, and also asked upstairs about doing a whole video. They knew who I was and they said, you'd be better off going downstairs. I don't know if that was because they do a better pint downstairs or because it, like, it's not like, it wasn't super busy upstairs or downstairs. So, but a lot of pubs would be like that to be like, oh no, our better taps are in this room or downstairs or upstairs or whatever. So, um, I don't know if that's that played into it, but yeah, not sure. I don't want to be bad, but I'm not sure about the whole logo and the foam malarkey. Um, but again, not really, nothing against your man. Like, it's just, I don't really go for those sort of gimmicks. I just want me pint with a nice bit of a dome. I don't need a, a cartoon drawn on it. But anyway, a decent pint, decent pint. 
shtick is literally a carbon copy of the coach and horses, if my memory serves me correct. Um, yeah, I can only compare it to my last point. Coach and horses was actually, this is probably gonna upset a lot of people and kind of let down a lot of people and disappoint a lot of people. Coach and horses, the last point I had was slightly better than that. That's probably a, a 7.7. 7 .7. Again, by no means a bad point. But I think there was, I think it's a little bit overhyped. Beautiful, beautiful, unbelievably cool pub. But the point, the juice itself, good, not incredible. That has been the best point of Guinness in central London. Shout out to Surfshark for sponsoring the video. Link in the description. We will see you in the next video. Thank you for watching.